In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a controller overlay on screen in OBS or Streamlabs OBS. This is wildly popular in the Rocket League and Call of Duty communities. I don't know why. Get some stimulated. And I'm going to show you how to get that same level of stimulation for free very easily. Then I'm going to cover why you would want to do this in the first place, to what end, to what benefit, and also two cons or downsides to having this screen overlay. <laughs> Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. Alrighty, stallions and stallionettes, welcome to the Gamer Heaven. I am your host, AK40 Kevin. Sharing my screen, we are going to need one program, which is OBS or Open Broadcaster. You can also do this on Streamlabs, and it will work the same. However, I know way, shape, or form recommend Streamlabs over OBS because it's the same program, but with a fat, bloated graphic user interface over OBS. And they also have some really scummy business practices that I've covered in the past. OBS is free open source software, and it is fantastic. We should honestly be doing our best to thank those developers. We should be on our hands and knees right now like this. The website you're going to visit, which will be linked in the description below, unless I forget, is going to be GamePadViewer.com, the official controller display and tester. Now pick your poison, grab a GamePad, Nintendo, PlayStation, Microsoft. This program has compatibility for most first and third party game pads, and if it doesn't, you can usually force it by running a program like Rewazd in the background. Let's go wired via USB-C or micro USB cable if it's an older controller. Over here on the website, it's going to tell me there's no game pads connected. Press any button to enable. I just press the A button. That message goes away, but there's nothing being displayed. Come down to this drop down and select player one. Right now, this controller looks a little figgity funky. That's because I'm forcing a dark theme and makes it look a little bit silly. I feel like I just got flash banged because I turned off the dark theme, but that's what the controller should look like. Hitting this little Xbox button, you will be able to select different visual representations of a controller. Kind of sucks meat that there's no modern controllers, such as the PS5 DualSense and the Xbox Series controllers, which don't have a cool name. Just called the Mic X Rad Gamepad. They do also have a couple different colors as well. This is the one that Joe Wo uses all the time if you watch him. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace! As you're fighting, going the shoulder backwards we have to cover. Guys, a beast on controller. And clicking on this color palette, you will be able to select an exact background color. However, guess what? This isn't going to matter because it's going to be transparent overlay on your stream. Next up, click this little hamburger drop down and you can't see what's happening until I move over there. This is a huge point of confusion. Remap buttons over here doesn't physically remap the buttons of the controller. What it does is if the visual representation isn't matching up with your controller, where you press X and it's showing on screen that you press circle, you can change that up here. But this isn't going to flash or remap your controller to where you you press jump and you crouch instead or anything like that. There's other programs that do that. This ain't it. And you can donate. And this is specifically for skin adopters, different cosmetic skins. If you have any issues, want to report a bug or just give them some praise, they have a feedback tab. And there's also a community discord, which is always good if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Getting this in OBS is freakishly easy. From the side menu, click generate URL. Now, if you click on skins, it looks like there's only one visible skin, but you can actually see them here if you scroll down, which is really funky. Select PS4 white. Then you're going to copy this URL. It will reveal itself once you hover over it, click on it, it'll copy it to the clipboard. Now over here in OBS or Open Broadcaster software, select the scene that you want. This is going to go into one of my gameplay scenes right over here. Oh, you can still see me in the corner. Hello. But this is where my gameplay would usually be when I'm slapping noobs up and down the lobby. But since the scene is for gameplay, this is where I want that controller overlay. Over here in sources, go ahead and right click and hit add. If you don't want to do it this method, you can also hit the little plus button. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to add a browser source. I like to rename this controller, leave the box ticked, hit OK. Hey, you've just added a browser source, but it's blank as hell. Nobody can see anything. In this URL, hit Control V on your keyboard or right click and hit paste to get that bad boy in there. And you can leave all of this default and hit OK. Oh my goodness gracious, the controller's disconnected. Don't worry, hit a button. It'll wake it right up. Oh, that's hot. One of the cool things I want to point out as I make this controller massive for you is it is linear or pressure sensitive. So depending on how hard I squeeze that trigger, it's going to change colors accordingly which is sweet. Same thing with those thumbsticks. If you want to show those viewers exactly what you're doing on them in the match, when you're peeking out of corners, doing those 360 no scopes and whatnot, people can see exactly what you're doing on that gamepad. Makes them stimulated and in return, the stimulation trickles down onto you. In all seriousness, this is massive. I'd like to make this much, much smaller, probably put it right up underneath myself. And on that default value of 1000, that is a totally fine value. As soon as I press a button, it is instantaneously 
reflecting on screen. These corneas don't see any lag. And I'm going to go ahead and dispel or debunk two rumors that I hear heavily around this program or this method or whatever the hell we're doing here today. The first one is that you need to leave the browser source open. Not only do you not need to leave the window open and then put your game over it and hiding it in the background or anything, but I have my browser completely closed now. Once you have that URL in OBS, you're good. Also, another thing you're going to notice, there's no wire attached right now. I'm connected to my PC via the Xbox Windows adapter. It's plugged into the front of my tower suck hole. Barely noticeable, but you do get a little bit more input lag or delay, especially because that dongle gets around 16 milliseconds of input lag or delay. I've tested it on the channel. It's slow. So if you're in some kind of a competitive esports situation, that is not the option you're going to be taking. You should be tethered via wire. Just so I'm showing you that this is in real time, I'm not blowing smoke up your patoods or anything like that. Wireless and the browser is completely, completely turned off. As you see, it's not running in the background, my taskbar or anything. Yep, nothing in the taskbar. Chrome ain't running. One more thing before I sign off. This really is set it and forget it. You really only need to do it once unless something gets janked up. But once you put that browser source in OBS, close the Chrome browser, just open OBS. And as you can see, I do have that source disconnected controller. As soon as I press a button, wakes right back up. It's running in the background, ready for me each time I stream for bajillion viewers. You keep thinking the video's over, but it's not because I've got so many pro tips or bro tips that I'm just going to keep dropping on you. Yes, you can transform this, grab it from the corner, make it bigger or smaller. But two things I do recommend doing is one, cropping off the bottom because this part of the gamepad doesn't do anything for anybody and just cuts into the screen. So in order to do that, holding down control on the keyboard is going to give me fine control to place it wherever I want. Now holding down alt and dragging with my mouse will allow me to disappear part of this image, which is good because I just want to see those thumbsticks. I don't really need to see the palm grips, which aren't really doing anything for anybody. The next thing is I recommend locking your browser sources so they don't move around on you. Now, if I try and grab this controller, nothing's happening. Hopefully I helped you put a controller on a screen so your viewers can lust over how sick you are when you're flicking the sticks. Why would you want to do this and why would you not want to do this? It just looks cool. If you're a streamer or a YouTuber, people can see, oh, he did a slide cancel there. Then he was spamming the hell out of his buttons here. And wow, he just team wiped. So for the entertainment factor or also for the informative factor, if you're doing some kind of a tutorial where it's useful to see what you're doing on the controller. And as for the cons, why would you not want to use this? Well, there's two that I could think of. The first one is there's a little bit outdated with the textures or models, the graphics with the PS4 controller and an Xbox One controller, not a series and PS5 controller. That's never really affected anybody or really mattered that much. So that one's kind of stupid. The other one is if you have a pretty low spec PC and you're just thanking the Lord that you can stream at all at 720p 30 frames per second, adding another browser source or even having an animated webcam overlay, anything that's resource intensive in OBS is really going to screw you. So something as frivolous as having your controller displayed on screen probably isn't that important to you. Having said that, it's only one browser source and it probably won't slap you that bad. I was just trying to approach this subjectively and come up with some downsides or anything, but why the hell would you not want to have your controller on screen? It looks sick. And now you know how to do it. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.